All right, should I start? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk about logically bypassing browser security boundaries. Uh, about me, my name is Jun Kokatsu. Uh, I'm in a browser vulnerability research team in Microsoft. Um, what I do in work is usually just test, testing new features of Edge, making sure that new feature doesn't introduce new bugs or new security vulnerabilities. Um, yeah, nothing fancy, just pen test. And I'm participant of uh, Chrome VRP. Uh, that's most of my report goes to. And I like Japanese manga as personal. And this is what you see in my uh, bug hunter profile. Uh, I'm not even in top 100 because they don't care about my Chrome bugs. This monkey, yeah, I, I really hate this. <laughs> <laughs> they should, yeah, they. Wait, do you know what, the, what this means? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But okay, so, it, yeah. For the record, uh, that means that your statistics are private. So if oh. you trigger the statistics public, then you can see uh, that all of your reports are accepted. So I think it's a hundred percent. Oh, okay. And severity, I think you only so it will be like a hundred, like high. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I thought that my reports are really poor and they were showing monkeys. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay, anyways, yeah, so this is my rank, uh, which I hope that people will integrate everything and I will see some rank up, but yeah, anyways. So I'll talk about uh, same origin policy and then uh, just simple concept, one concept of bypassing same origin policy and then finding bugs. And then I'll also talk about site isolation, bypassing site isolation and wrap up. Wrap up. Uh, so same origin policy, just, uh, this is just a core concept that scheme and hot and port makes origin. And if you want to make sure that same origin policy applies, you just check scheme and host and port is same in two URLs and that same origin. Uh, of course, this, is, this doesn't cover everything, but this is the core concept of same origin policy. Um, so scope of same origin policy, say able.com can uh, just load results from example.com using iframe or audio or video or image tag or script tag or style sheet. So anything that's loaded um, into evil.com from other site shouldn't be able to um, read by uh, evil.com because that's what same origin policy protects. Um, it all applies to all, I mean, everything in web page as well as beyond web page. You'll see what that is. Um, so, uh, concept of bypassing same origin policy that I have um, is that, you know, core concept is just comparing parts of URL, which is scheme, host, and port. Um, so, that means that if you can make something or you can use feature that confuse browser, that it's maybe difficult or impossible to um, decide the origin by URL. And when it happens, browser get confused and you usually get SOP bypass. So what you need to find is in some way you give a URL, but it doesn't represent a origin that end up in the document or in the resource, right? So first thing coming to my mind is I frame a sandbox or CSP sandbox. So what that is, is you just do iframe to example.com you have um, sandbox attribute, which says any value, or content security policy with value sandbox, and blah, blah, blah. So what you see in the end is that location of href, which is a URL, shows example.com, but origin shows null, because um, the sandbox tries to protect um, malicious content. So what they do is they make that content from unique origin and not from whatever in the URL is. So in this way, you can mitigate a malicious content from accessing a main origin. So they intentionally change origin so that they can protect against um, malicious content. So this doesn't apply if you have allow same origin, but usually if you, you have that, then there's uh, mostly no meaning of sandbox. So you don't really have that uh, thing. So just so that you know that people use this feature, Dropbox actually has slash enterprise, 
where they host CMS content, which is third-party content. So what they do is when user goes to slash enterprise, they append CSP sandbox uh, with response header. So what they do is um, because that's third-party content that they don't you know, code or they don't uh, patch things, so maybe there's XSS. And how they mitigate is to have CSP sandbox. So whatever CMS content render is in the unique origin. In that way, even though there's XSS in CMS content, they can't affect Dropbox.com because they are rendered in unique origin. So actually, there's whole talk about this if you want to watch. Um, the thing is, browser support, uh, you know, uh, password manager, and password manager only check URL. They don't see origin in the document. So what you can do is you just have, let's say you find uh, XSS in uh, CMS that is used by Dropbox. You use that XSS to generate input box with uh, on change uh, event handler. And whenever it changes, you just retrieve the value and send to attacker server. And what password manager see is only URL. They don't check whether origin is null or unique. So they will happily drop the Dropbox password, and then you can steal that, right? So this affects uh, Chrome for iOS, Firefox, and Web uh, Safari. Sorry. Um, so Chrome didn't patch that till now, <laughs> and it's public. <laughs> so if you have any website that um, depends on this behavior that they render um, uh, untrusted content inside Sandbox, you can actually steal it. Maybe you don't need uh, allow script or script execution because in Sandbox you can use CSS, whatever you want. And if you have CSS execution, you can retrieve input value by brute forcing or other techniques. Um, Firefox recently patched it, but it was a duplicate of nine years old internal bug. Uh, which said that maybe we shouldn't, you know, check URL in password manager and maybe we should do intelligent things, even though you, they didn't know this attack. Um, so, yeah, it was duplicate. But, um, yeah, it was good because they now knew the attack, so they could patch faster. And Safari did it in a way that um, they stopped doing autofill. So what they do is, even though they are confused with the origin. They don't autofill anymore. So attack, if attacker wants to still um, get the password, they need to somehow socially engineer people to click and you know to enter their password. So which is, I think, good mitigation. So yeah, only Chrome for iOS is unpatched, which you can use it if you want to. Um, so second thought is that. Uh, Time of check, time of use attack. This is a common vulnerability in software where um, there's a timing difference between security check and uh, actual use of file. So in between, if you can swap the file, you actually maybe trigger a vulnerability that allows access to the file or allows to bypass security check. Um, main idea here is that, so let's say you have image tag loading uh, able.com slash magic. There's magic in between that even though it requested to able.com, it will get result from example.com and load it to the same image. When this happens, for image case, we can use Canvas API to read the image data because you have access to pixels, which is rendered in the image if that's same origin. And let's say for audio, we have web audio API. For video, we have capture stream method. Uh, for stylesheet, we have stylesheet.css text, which you can get CSS text. Uh, so we have this web API that even though in fetch or XHL you, can, you can't read the response, but there are web APIs that can read the response uh, given that browser is confused in uh, response that it's maybe same origin. So fast magic is maybe everyone knows. Uh, this is HTTP redirect. Um, Say this is the same example as previously. Um, so, ev.com slash magic request goes on. We hope that same origin check happens at initial URL. Request goes to ev.com. They respond with uh, 302, which is redirect. That goes to example.com. Example.com return with 
uh, secret.jpg and then it goes through this image stack. If browser is confused, then we can get the image. So what happened here is that it didn't affect image, but in fact, it's, it affected audio or video. So you could read the audio data of audio or video using uh, Web Audio uh, API in Chrome um, because they only check the initial URL that, OK, maybe this is the same origin, so you can allow access. And then there was a redirect, and they allowed access to other origins data. And in WebKit, they didn't have uh, same origin policy check for audio data. <laughs> so you, you could just <laughs> render uh, cross-origin audio and read it, uh, which was uh, $2,000. Both are reported to a Chrome bug bounty because they pay both for WebKit bug as well as Chrome bug. Uh, this is because uh, Chrome for iOS uses WebKit, this, which is just uh, Apple forced to use WebKit. So they pay for it, which is good. Um, so second magic is Service Worker. Uh, Service Worker is a script that uh, gets registered in, uh, and uh, run in the background. And it has ability to intercept the request um, within its scope and respond to that request. So this is what usually you do, that you call navigator.serviceworker.register with service worker script. Because it's in the root directory, you, have, uh, you can intercept requests to whole example.com scope. And when you, um, when you intercept the request, uh, you can just do you know, event.respond with, and then you can respond with any other page and these are two cases that service worker can respond with cross-origin resource. One is that there is cores access, where cross-origin resource allows access to resource by cores. Second is that if request de destination accept no cores request, uh, which is usually things like script tag, image tag, audio, video, you know, it's just a way how web works that you don't need to have cores to access those data. You can just load script from other site, or you can load image from other site without needing of cores. So service worker work in the same way. So what you can do is, um, instead of do, doing usual fetch, you just do respond with, and then you call mode no cores. In this way, you can respond with no cores. So if you just call this fetch method with mode no cores, what you get is opaque response. Uh, which means that even though your request successfully uh, has happened, uh, you don't have access to response body. So you can just do re request and you, you don't get any data. And this is uh, how uh, attack look like. I mean, the idea of attack is that same uh, f.com slash magic image goes to the browser. We hope that somewhere here there's the same origin check. Uh, browser first check that if this request is in scope of any service worker, they find that there is service worker in able.com. So it goes to service worker. They check that um, what service worker has. So service worker says that if URL end with magic, which is same, so it fetch uh, secret.jpg with mode no cause, but we do credential include to make sure that cookies are attached with the request. And request goes to network and example.com, example.com reply, and it goes to the same tag. So this applies to any tag that accepts no cause request. Um, so Chrome missed uh, this no cause, I mean, tainted response check in many components. Uh, I could bypass previous patch with this technique. Um, I could even get audio and video with capture stream method, which you can call in uh, uh, media tag, like video tag or uh, audio tag. You could read a uh, web VTT file, which is used for subtitles. So this file uh, by default requires cores, but somehow they made in a way that if you do no cause request later in the service worker, you could bypass this cause check. Um, yeah, I could read CSS file of cross origin, of course. And then uh, response size of arbitrary, uh, arbitrary resource. And this is because there is API called um, resource timing API, where if the resource is same origin, you can get a property called uh, decoded uh, response size. So 
if we can bypass the same origin check with uh, the service worker, you can get response size, a decoded response size of any cross origin resource. And yeah, that what is. So I got 8,000 for this. I mean, I reported all different bug. This is not like one report. This is from 2000, end of 2017 to, you know, like every month or something. So, and I have video. I don't know how to play this. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 it's going in, yeah. Oh. So this is Chrome 65. Um, so I used uh, Google Cloud Platform because I think you guys are familiar. So what I did is I did uh, no public, public access, which means that only a person who uploaded this file has access with his cookie and no one else, right? And then victim goes to attacker site, I hope. Ah, it's slow because I'm running in VM. <laughs> it's stealing the content. There is hidden. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> wait. Yeah. So here is um, actually video that played this video. I'm stealing by hiding the video. So it plays the video on the background, steal the video, display the video. You don't need to play. You just need to send this content. But it says something in Japanese, which I hope you don't understand. <laughs> but we have another bug in WebVTT where you can steal a content of subtitle. And this is what it says. So you can't steal secret if you don't know Japanese. So that, that's what the secret was, I hope. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I will show you actually what, oh, sorry, what was the code is. So in the top, sorry, maybe it's too small. It says style visibility hidden. This is um, uh, actual uh, video that we load and we retrieve. And second video is the result that I showed you, but this is not necessary for your attack because you don't need to show. You just need to send to server. What I did here is I register service worker. After the service worker registry, I just delayed for loading video of the main video. Uh, just to make sure that inter uh, request is intercepted by service worker I register. And then it goes to where? Oh, yeah. It's so when left video, which is the top one, uh, goes, uh, uh, is ready to play, it, call, it fires on cam play. So that goes to this function. Uh, it calls uh, capture stream method, which will capture the stream. And then I can record that stream using media record API. And then it goes inside. Whenever I got a uh, data variable, I'll push that into the array, which I call there, this one. And um, yeah, you, I just push the chunk in. And I, I use a file reader uh, API to read a chunk and return as a data URL, which you will get here. And then I just push the result of data URL to the video. But you don't need to do that in the real attack. And for uh, service worker, so what I did is whenever a request end with video, I just change that with a uh, video that I want to steal. Um, I made sure that I call credential include so that it sends cookie. So when, um, um, when authentication succeed with cookie uh, for non-public uh, cloud storage uh, data, this will further redirect to a random subdomain of Google user content actually hosts uh, the a video, but we don't care because we already bypassed the same origin policy. So it just load whatever they redirect to, and then we can steal that as well. Uh, this is same for BTT, and this is just web BTT stealing part. This is normal way how you get a subtitle. You have an XSS there. Where? Oh yeah, I don't I don't care about XSS. I mean, <laughs> this is just the show, right? I, I <laughs> yeah, I don't. Bounty, please. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, sorry, I'll patch that. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was exploit, so. Um, so there's another magic. <laughs> there's another magic, uh, which is uh, HLS. So HLS is uh, HTTP live streaming, uh, which is a playlist-based uh, media file made by Apple. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, what it does is when you load video with this extension, weird extension called M3U8, um, they load this playlist 
yeah, it's weird that you know video file is text format, and so what you need to concentrate is there is uh, video and audio you can see there that again request to other resource that goes to here and there and that actually loads a binary actual audio and video file. So in this point, you I think you already know that this is really good attack. So what you do is in video, you again do magic and then that goes to browser. We hope that they do same origin check here. It goes to able.com that respond with, okay, my video manifest is not in evil.com, but it's in example.com, so browser go and request there, and it come back, right? Um, so the thing was, in, so this HLS format is supported in uh, WebKit, me, which means that all browser in um, uh, iOS, and everything in Safari, and also in Edge, in desktop, it's native support in and for Chrome and Firefox, it's only supported in Android uh, because I don't know they need it. So what they do is they call Android me, uh, Media Player because they don't know how to parse uh, HLS file in Chrome itself because it, there's no implementation in Chromium. So they just pass the HL file, which uh, Android Media Player don't know about same origin policy, so they will just follow whatever they do and responds back whatever they get to Chrome. So Chrome doesn't know anything about same origin policy at the end that where it came from because they just request to Android Media Player. Right? And Firefox did something similar. They used a um, third party player which was written in Java and they just do, they were actually really close to protecting. So what I did was um, so this affected the audio part. So in Firefox case, um, this should be audio, right? And then source. So this, instead of video, it should be audio. But they actually check that. So uh, their media player goes there and again check here for the same origin policy. What I did was I respond here with able.com slash redirect and then I, I call redirect to um, example.com so they, they couldn't check the redirect after the re request. So I could bypass that as well. So I bypass in Chrome for video leak and then for uh, Firefox I did a uh, leak of audio and then WebKit, I don't know. They had na native <laughs> implementation which means that they knew where request was going and everything but they just leaked the video which is <laughs> 10,000 bounty. Uh, of course, the uh, Chrome and WebKit bounty were paid by Chrome VRP, and then Firefox was paid by Mozilla. So it was like 4,000, 2,000, 4,000, because leaking video or image is more high severity than leaking audio. Uh, that's what I think, what they think. Oh yeah, so I will go to site isolation, but any question till here? Now it's fixed with an Android. Ah, uh, yeah, this, this one is all fixed. Yeah, this was yeah close to high severity. So yeah, the, so yeah, all fixed. Was the uh, edge uh, vulnerable to this? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, it, what I don't know what do you mean by this, but yeah, there were so <laughs> many bugs. Um, for HLS, no, edge wasn't a uh, vulnerable, which was good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Edge has native implementation of HLS, which is why we were safe, because we knew where Redirect was going. Um, WebKit knew too. Yeah, WebKit knew, but they, they just messed it up. Um, yeah, uh, other bug, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't want to say that. Uh, you know, this is why I work on Edge security, right? I make sure that all feature is secure before shipping, and in personal time, I make sure that all web platform, other platform are secure, which is maybe no. Yeah, so, yeah, anyways, yeah, that's what I can give in the best. Maybe after the talk I can give, but, yeah. <laughs> after some beer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> Anyone? That's it? Okay. So I'll go to uh, uh, site isolation part. Um, so site isolation is a security feature in Chrome, which was uh, recently introduced in Chrome 67. Um, it mitigates 
uh, against Spectre and UXSS by strictly uh, separating a render process per site. So what site means in site isolation is a scheme plus uh, effective top level domain plus one. So they don't care about subdomain or port, they just care about scheme and domain, you can say. They say ETLD because um, some site register their domain as um, public suffix list, let's say like blogspot.com, which they give subdomain to users. So they want to make sure that those subdomain are separated into, you know, ETLD plus one. So my blog is like shhnjk.blogspot.com. But that is still inside the ETLD plus one because blogspot.com is considered as top level domain. So you can do that if you, if you register your website in suffix, public suffix list. And uh, so why I say site in site isolation is because there is also a feature called same site cookie where they don't care about scheme because uh, cookie is traditionally they don't care about HTTP or HTTPS. So there you don't need to confuse uh, site is different in some features, but in site isolation, which means the scheme and uh, ETLD plus one. And so this is the example. Uh, you load uh, a.com, right? That is hosted in one render process and b.com in other render process. Even if a.com do iframe to b.com, iframe will be hosted in separate process. So this is a process level uh, mitigation that you can't access other process. You need to call IPC and try to access. So in this way, they mitigate uh, UXSS and Spectre. Um, yeah, but I thought, you know, they can't kill UXSS. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty bad if they kill UXSS. I, did, I didn't want to see UXSS dying in Chrome. Can I say something short because I know the guy is doing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think... Oh, oh, this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this guy called iBoom. Uh, he's, I think, Roshin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he I don't know him personally, but I saw him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, he reported back in Chrome 61, which was UXSS, really cool one. Um, so I used this. Um, so Chrome 61, there was, you know, uh, there was site isolation available behind the flag, but it wasn't publicly available. So I enabled that flag of site isolation and I tried to trigger this UXSS. Uh, I did document.domain, which gave me google.com. So it's working, maybe. I tried document.cookie and then it crashed the process. So what they do is whenever they detect some information leak to, um, of other site that they didn't uh, give permission to, to some render process, they will just kill that process that requested some cross-site information. Uh, so this is bad, but this is fun. Uh, oh, it's not working. Wait. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, it's working. It, it was freezing here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I pinged Masato. He's uh, my friend. He's Japanese. I'm Japanese too, actually, somehow. Yeah, if you didn't know. Um, so I said, <laughs> yeah, I said, Masato, hey, it's fun. Like, you can't get cookie even if you have your excess. And five minutes later, he said, oh, you know, you just create blob URL from UXSS and that can access cookie. Okay. I mean, the Chrome security team spent more than five years of implementing this feature and he bypassed in five minutes. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay, this is good. Um, yeah, but this was the issue because, you know, they patched the UXSS. So we need to somehow make new POC that we can show to Chrome security team that this is site isolation bypass, uh, which is, you know, after Chrome 67 and this was patched in Chrome 62. So the way maybe I saw two options was find new, new UXSS. Um, this is actually not trivial. There was another, another UXSS in Chrome 63, but it didn't even trigger um, you know, script execution in cross-site um, because they already detect that they gained a script execution in cross-site. 
And I will explain later that why this uh, specific UXSS didn't get caught by site isolation. Uh, so this was really difficult. Maybe second way was just simulate the renderer pro compromise and try to replicate the same bug. And yeah, but this, you know, they, they have a special reward for site isolation that they pay max $8,000 for this. Uh, but they say that attack that assume render compromise is not in scope of bounty because they are still figuring out how to do that. They still protect uh, against UXSS or cookie still, but not the other things. Um, so this was difficult. I told Masato that maybe you should just report bugs saying that we could bypass in 61 and maybe they will try to find the root cause and give us bounty or give him bounty. I didn't do anything at this moment. Um, so yeah, he's really, you know, pure Japanese and he said that he, he wants to know everything that why it happened and I really feel bad without knowing how it works and just reporting bug and yeah. So I was stuck at that point. <laughs> you know, like he found uh, this bug in end of 2017. At this point it was like 2018, July, you know, like, okay, eight months was passed and Masato is a really busy person. He don't have much time to do this stuff. And so I said, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'll just go on Twitter and rant about it. <laughs> so what I did was, okay, I said, I predict that next person who will find UXSS will find site isolation bypass. And this guy is from Chrome security team. He said that, okay, if you have site isolation bypass, you don't need UXSS or renderer compromise, okay. But, you know, in, if you remember previously, the uh, bounty program said that you can't assume renderer compromise. So I pinged another person in Chrome security team who works for site isolation, who calls uh, Nesco. And I asked him, okay, if I compromise renderer, can I perform a cross-site UXSS, which, which is a weird, uh, weird, but uh, I call cross-site XSS because same site XSS is still possible uh, even after site isolation because site goes under one process. And he said that, okay, yeah, I think we kill, you know, UXSS but as a bug class, you know, UXSS doesn't exist in Chrome anymore. And that was a big challenge. All right, you know, I know the bug already. I, I just need to prove that it's wrong. And yeah, so I told Masato that I'll, I'm just gonna do it somehow by render compromise. Uh, so just going back to the UXSS that uh, I've been found, uh, <clears throat> this was a POC. So what he did was he combined two features with call, which is called MHTML and XSLT. So in, um, so you can see that this, yeah, you just can you can just ignore about this and you just concentrate on this iframe part. It loads Google.com, which actually comes from here. So if you set content location and this, when you load this one, browser will try to load this HTML instead of requesting to Google.com. So in browser process, so usually this iframe should be in another render process. But even after enabling site isolation, this wasn't the case because browser process thought that this is just same document navigation where they are requesting to the same document, right? So the request didn't go maybe into browser process, so they could iframe google.com, which was not hosting google.com content, but it was instead uh, UXSS. So what I did previously was try to get cookie, which goes to browser process, but browser process see that, okay, this process was registered for ev.com, so they shouldn't be accessing this cookie, so they just kill this process, which was what happened previously. And just understanding the Masato's bypass, what he did was instead of calling cookie here directly, he made blob URL with a content that he loaded uh, google.com slash robots.txt because you can I mean, this doesn't have uh, X frame option, so you can load it inside iframe. And then after loading it on load event, he just called this dot content we know dot document dot cookie, which access the cookie. So what happened is, so we get this origin in iframe, which is still in the able.com site. Instead of requesting cookie, we said that please, we want to make blob URL for google.com. And they said, okay, you can make blob URL. 
it's not cookie. And then after getting blob URL, if you see render process is changed because now this is site for google.com. This process is register for google.com. Then we, you can uh, actually render iframe for google.com and try to access cookie. Now it's register for google.com. So you, you can access cookie and this is uh, site isolation bypass. Um, so how this happened? I actually go into Chrome source code. You can see that this says renderer, which means that this code resides in the renderer process. And then act they actually do a registration of blob URL inside renderer process as of now in Chrome 70. And so you can, you can see that there's origin part, which you can modify whatever you want because you assume that you compromise the render process, right? And then, <clears throat> yeah, after creating this blob URL, they didn't check that if this site can make this blob URL. So they miss, browser process missed to check that uh, if this blob URL is valid for this process. And this is 8,000 bounty because it's like full isolation, uh, site isolation bypass. And I have live demo, which I hope it works. Wait, wait, how can I? How can I show the PC? Is there any way? Oh yeah, okay. Ah, yes. <laughs> so I have WinDBG. Uh, so WinDBG is a Microsoft software that you can use to attach to process and change anything you want to. Um, so what I'll do is, sorry, maybe it'll take some time. Um, but so this is my exploit site which is online if you want to check. <laughs> All right, so I le render this site. We assume that this, uh, by loading this site, uh, they compromise the renderer. So this is just hands-on so that you guys know what to do if you want to test site, site isolation. Um, oh yeah, just in case. Yeah, this is Chrome 70 late latest version, right? Um, <laughs> so, you go to task manager, you see that, okay, yeah, this is a process for my site. You can see the URL and this is the process number. So what you'll do is file attach process. You'll see a bunch of process. Maybe you should do sort by ID. One, is one thirty three. Wait, I think it's this. Yeah, where was that? Yeah, okay. I attach to this process. Uh, maybe I should do, wait, sorry. Yeah. So I attach to this process, wait. <laughs> uh, what I'll do now is I'll just put breakpoint on the same line that I showed you last time. Um, and I just wait. And I also should say go. Yeah, okay. So this is done. I'll click go. You can see that this hit the breakpoint. So I'll go to console. DB is the command to see the local variable. So you can see that there are parameter passed. And you can see the same parameter passed here, like origin, public URL, right? And then, um, so you want to modify origin, so you'll go to origin. You see that there's a host, which is shhnjk.com. You see that this memory holds a uh, host. So you'll go to memory manager, right? Oh, wait. All right, so this is the shhnjk part. So I'll change this to google.com, right? Because I want That's this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I need this to be uh, Google, right? I, I can compromise renderer, so I can do anything. Uh, wait. And then I actually need to change another part, which is a public URL part. It holds a blob URL that they try to create. So this is a string um, memory that you can check. This again holds SHHNJK, so I'll just change this right, to Google. 
And then we hit go and site isolation bypass works. So <clears throat> we loaded google.com, which I modified in the render process. Browser process said, just OK, go ahead. So what I did is I just fetch google.com. Uh, I load in incognito because I didn't want it to show my credential or anything. So <laughs> this uh, just did fetch to Google, right? And I access cookie in iframe, which says uh, cookie of incognito, hope not mine. And yeah, and in the end, you can see that <clears throat> the ID I attached here and the end result ID is different because they swapped the ID to resist google.com. And you can see that there is no additional process because now they think that this blob URL and iframe, which is uh, real google.com, right, uh, is uh, same site. So they have everything in same render process, which means you can get whatever you want. Um, yeah, so that was the right demo. And wait. Oh, OK. So what site isolation protect as of now? Uh, it protect against Spectra, and this UXSS will be patched in next version of Chrome, which is 71, so soon, maybe in December. Um, so hopefully there is no UXSS, but uh, you can still, I mean, there can be still UXSS if there is uh, some issue in browser process. Actually, there was some bug uh, which I reported and fixed where you can resist a service worker to any scope you want. So you could resist a service worker to google.com scope or anything because they had new feature and they didn't take, check anything. Um, so yeah, if they do weird thing in browser process, you can still have your success, but maybe in, not in render process, which you need to you know, still try to find your success. So it doesn't still protect, uh, fully protect against renderer compromise. So you can still get, you know, password from password manager by changing your origin and try to get new password. Uh, but you can't do UXSS or cookie access. That's uh, what Chrome team said. I mean, site isolation guy who I met with said. Um, so I, I think that this is definitely in scope of bug bounty. Even now, if you find UXSS or cookie access through renderer compromise, you can report it. Um, so wrap up, you know, SOP bypass is even, uh, it's not, yeah, only about DOM access. It can be like resource access or anything. And uh, the bug I presented uh, about resource access is interesting because uh, Chrome now has protection called uh, cross-origin read blocking, where you can't uh, load um, cross-origin data, which is HTML or XML or JSON, right? So even though you have same origin bypass some, somehow, in if it's not UXSS or something, I guess. Uh, you can, uh, you cannot even fetch uh, HTML or XML or anything. So uh, that's already protected by default. But interesting thing is that you can still try to bypass, you know, image, same origin policy, or audio, video that I showed you. That's still work in latest version and in the future as well. Um, yeah, and site isolation is interesting. Just uh, how they work and. It's just mind-blowing in the way that they made this protection from process level, and they really work to protect UXSS. It's really good. And if you have a website that you want to protect against this, maybe browser bug, not UXSS, or, uh, but like the, the thing I did with image and audio or video, you can do with same site cookie. You can resist a lax cookie to your website. Uh, make sure that your resource is only fetched within site. So Lux, what Lux cookie does is it will only send request if it was requested from uh, same site. So you, if there is some cross-site website that wants to get data from your website, you just need to check that if Lux cookie was sent from that site. If that, that's not available, you don't need to respond with sensitive data. And you can say maybe not not authorized or anything. So that works for cookie authenticated resource or any attack uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, any attack that doesn't uh, depend on uh, top 
top, all, uh, top navigation, top level navigation, because Lux cookie can be sent in top navigation where you just do link click and your window shift to some other site. So in case you can abuse XSS filter to retrieve cross origin data, maybe it doesn't work because it works in top level context as well. But any attack that requires loading cross origin resource like iframe or video or image that can be protected with uh, same site cookie. Uh, and acknowledgement, uh, service worker technique is actually like found by someone in 2016. I don't know who is that, but this was known. But then I discovered this whole thing in 2017 through 2018. Uh, I boom for UXSS, Masato Kinigawa, who find uh, you know site isolation bypass, and Jake. He actually find a web audio API bug in Edge and Firefox. And this inspired me to find bug in Chrome and WebKit, which was good. Uh, and I also thank for uh, Chrome security team, Mozilla security team, and App Product security team. I sent a slide, which wasn't confidential, the, the part that I could share to them and uh, let them review, and they really helped. And thanks for Google VRP for inviting me. And also, you know, uh, Chrome VRP pays for you know, WebKit bug, so which is good. They're protecting, you know, users for even iOS. So that's good. And that's it. Any question? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it was maybe long. Yeah, sorry. No, it was good. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, there is something like uh, for um, site isolation. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, why does it protect from UXSS but not from like XSS or? Yeah, so what site isolation does is uh, they resist uh, whenever process is created, they try to resist uh, by navigation that, okay, navigation happened to uh, say example.com. So this process can access data of example.com. But in XSS case, you already have script execution example.com. So they can't do anything because you already execute script in example.com and they don't, you don't try to do anything cross-site. Yeah. <coughs> There's a weird feature in Edge that you can replace state and you can modify any port you want and the page stays basically, do, do you know that? Yeah? Um, yeah, so Edge has a weird thing that, you know, it's historical, I think. Um, they, they have, you know, they don't have same origin policy, right? They have weird thing called scheme and host and zone, right? This was before same origin policy when I was there, that there was zone, that internet and intranet. And they, uh, so what they try to do now is try to make as much closer as possible for origin, but we have some legacy part that still check only scheme and host and zone. So if you modify port, they sometimes think that, okay, it's same. Yeah, so that's a weird legacy thing that we try to protect, but usually port doesn't matter much. Usually that's what we hope, but yeah, we are trying to work on that. I have one question. So yeah. for the M3 for you thing. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 HLS, yes. Yeah, so um, could, did you ever think about uh, cases where you might be able to inject that? Is it content type check? Probably not. It depends on the, it's probably sniffed if I understand. Yeah, I think so, yes. So uh, if you can inject text into a website, could you use this format to extract information from the site? Like Maybe, with yes. With CSS. Maybe, there, yes. there are attacks with CSS before and yeah. JavaScript before. Yes. Yes. And uh, yeah, I think this can be even used in uh, SSRF or something because mm. you can load, uh, let's say if they serve, I mean, they are server side browser like uh, headless Chrome, or I don't know, any browser that uses, uh, understand this format. And you can try to load um, this video format with data URL. And they try to check a video file from that data URL and try to request that URL, right? So that's SSRF by design. So if there is some server side that understand this format, you can do SSRF pretty much. And I didn't try it because um, it requires a special, so if you see, wait, where was that? <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. 
sorry, it was too long. No, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, so it they re requires a special, yeah. So you need this one first. It has to be at the beginning. Yeah, I think it has to be a beginning. I, I didn't check in all browser, but mostly it should be in the beginning. Mm. Yeah, so this was a complicated thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that was... Yeah, if anyone is interested in fuzzing, this format is really good. Uh, <laughs> it was really difficult to explore because whenever I try to do a real thing, they just crash or hang and I couldn't <laughs> get it to work. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to fuzz this format, this is really good. It works in all browser. Uh, but could you a bit explain how you was able to extract uh, some sense information when you used media player? Because as I know, when you send requests from media players, then media player does not have cookies and something else. Yeah, so I didn't investigate on that part. Maybe they tried to pass cookie or maybe not. Maybe in the Firefox case, they did because they tried to come back. In Chrome case, I haven't checked that. But in WebKit case, they definitely did because they have native implementation. So yeah, I couldn't dig deeper on that because it was just fast. I reported and they quick, quickly yeah. passed. So okay. yeah. yeah, maybe it was exploited, maybe not. But mostly, yes. And actually, if, even if, if the, it's, a bug, it's a vulnerability if they don't use a browser because then you might be able to use it to bypass proxy settings, for example. If you can have the media player issue the request, then you will be able to isn't it, is it possible to lock load in HTTP uh, but uh, file from local lock from local device <laughs> but, but yeah. I think maybe it will prevent it but um, but yeah maybe you can do that maybe instead of doing HTTP you can say file and then try to request to file and get local file audio video maybe yeah you can do that maybe you can try that's cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can. I hope that they pass. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So these two browser, how they patched is so they didn't have a way to patch because they, they depend on third party or you know, external thing. So what they did is whatever they respond, they consider that this is cross origin. So now, even if you try to load same origin video, they consider it as a cross origin. So yeah. I mean, you can't use Web Audio API or Capture Stream anymore in HLS, in Android, uh, I mean, Chrome for Android or Chrome for, ah, sorry, Firefox for Android, because they consider everything to be cross-origin. They couldn't patch in a nice manner, but they just patched it because it was bad.